Welcome. My name is Drew Desker. I am the director of the Copernic Observatory, and um, we are here to celebrate Winter Star Party. Uh, so um, I think what I'm going to do here is just lay out how things are going to play out today. Um, I'm going to start with a, a presentation about Copernic himself, uh, also talk a little about, about Copernic Observatory, and then there's a little uh, raffle uh, uh, prize that we're going to be giving away a couple of uh, Copernic memberships, and then uh, once we uh, do that, we'll take a little bit of a bio break, um, and then uh, our main presenter, Bob, uh, Bob Noya, uh, will do his presentation on uh, who says astronomy, you know, isn't funny, and so uh, it'll be a great presentation. And then finally, uh, Jeremy Cardi will, uh, if all of a sudden a miracle occurs and there's a, a, a an opening in the sky. We we're going to try to do some uh, some live live observing, but uh, maybe at this point, just be uh, um, Jeremy talking a little bit about what's actually up in the skies, and uh, um, and we'll take it from there. So we'll see what we'll see what the rest of the evening brings. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to my presentation, and uh, let's take it from there. It's uh, we already I see we already have uh, you know 33 people watching, and um, so again, if you get any comments or questions, go ahead and uh, put them in the chat, and we'll uh, try to answer them as we can. So uh, here we go. All right. So uh, again, this is a uh, Copernic's Winter Star Party. Um, uh, this is uh, for those who've never actually been up here. This is uh, what the Copernic Observatory looks like in the winter, uh, hence the Winter Star Party, and. Uh, uh, so let's see here. Um, I want to also call out uh, and thank our, our friends at Drones Over Broom. Uh, they have, for a number of years now, done a number of, uh, of um, pictures, you know, drone, drone shots of, of Copernic and the surrounding areas, and they're just absolutely beautiful. So uh, sometime after this, uh, uh, after our winter start party, either tonight or, or Sometime you know tomorrow or whatever, uh, go out on Facebook and check out Drones Over Broom. They do do some fantastic, some fantastic shots uh, from throughout the area. All right, let's uh, let's press on. So, if this were an in-person winter star party, you'd be greeted at the uh, at the door with a couple of our interns. And if you're a, if you have a Copernic membership, you'd be of course getting in for free. Otherwise, uh, you'd be paying the uh, low low admission rate. Um, this was actually, I think, a picture taken uh, at our last Winter Star Party in uh, 2019, at least the last in-person one. I'm sorry, last 2020 was the last uh, in-person one. And, and we usually have a full crowd. It's, uh, we can put over 100 people in, in here, and uh, it's, it's always a, a great time to have, uh, have a lot of people up in here. We always, of course, uh, whenever you come to Copernic, give you an opportunity to check out our telescopes. This is actually uh, one of the three permanent telescopes that we've got out in the domes. Uh, this is our 20-inch uh, reflecting telescope. It was actually donated back in the 1990s by the Roger Kresge Foundation. And uh, we used to put eyepieces on this, uh, on this uh, telescope. In fact, I recall coming up here back in the 80s and looking at Halley's Comet as it was sort of leaving... Uh, Leaving the area, as it were, but um, uh, right now this we uh, we just do use it for imaging. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get a, get a grant from the Kresge Foundation for some really high-resolution camera systems, and and a lot of the the fantastic shots that uh, we we've you know, we we've take up here are through this uh, through this particular telescope. And of course, after the uh, presentation, uh, we invite people to come out to go uh, do some observing and. Uh, Art Cassiola is one of our uh, educators, a member of the Copernic Astronomic Society, the astronomy club that's up here. But that big blue telescope is a relatively new addition for us. It's We call it the Andy Teleska Memorial Telescope. Uh, Andy Teleska was a uh, educator uh, in town, and uh, uh, he passed away uh, a few years ago. He Again, he used to t uh, teach astronomy at, at Binghamton University as well as uh, physics at Johnson City High School. and. Uh, his family uh, donated uh, the funds for this particular telescope, and what's particularly great about it is that it's wheelchair accessible, and uh, which is, you know, again, you have a, an opportunity for people that, that might be mobility impaired to uh, to get right in there and uh, use a really nice telescope to uh, take a look at the night sky. So, but again, you know, this year we're uh, we're all virtual, so we're gonna 
press on. Uh, one thing I always like doing when we have these uh, uh, YouTube videos, uh, these live streams, is to find out where people are coming, uh, watching from. So uh, you don't have to put your street address in, but uh, just let us know, like what what city you're you're uh, you're uh, you're look you're uh, you know you're watching us from. It's uh, uh, we now have over close to three thousand people that are subscribed to our YouTube channel and literally around the world. So it'd be nice to sort of see who's with us uh, with us tonight. Also um, down in the description of the um, of this YouTube channel, there's a, an opportunity for you to um, uh, donate. If you uh, are in a position to do so, uh, uh, help us, you know, continue to uh, be able to live stream. Uh, you know, like everything else, uh, everything costs money. So if you can uh, offer us a little bit of uh, uh, support there, that'd be great. Uh, all right, so let's let's move on to the man, Nikolai Copernic. Uh, we also know him as Nicholas Copernicus. And uh, today is his actual birthday, February 19th. He was born February 19th, 1473. He, uh, today he would have, uh, so this is technically his 549th birthday. doesn't look a day over 430. I mean, sorry, 549th, a day over 430. It, it's better when you actually do the joke uh, properly. But anyway, um, this particular painting is uh, by a Polish uh, uh, artist called Jan uh, Mateiko, and he actually did it in, in uh, 1873. Uh, but this is actually a picture of him on top of his observatory at Fromberg Cathedral, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, in uh, in just a little bit. So um, again, he was born on this date, 1473, in Torin, Poland, um, and he actually just was a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, student, um, uh, and. Just to give you a little bit of background, he studied mathematics, art, both canon law in the in the in the church as well as civil law, uh, and was a physician. He studied medicine. Uh, he actually traveled to Italy to enroll in a canon and civil law program at the University of Bologna. And during that time, he met an astronomer by the name of Domenico Maria Novaro de Ferrara, who deeply influenced his uh, interest in astronomy. And we have to thank uh, Domenico for uh, sitting. Uh, Copernic on his way to uh, changing, <laughs> changing the way we uh, look at the world um, and, and our place in the universe. Um, Copernicus uh, uh, spoke German, he spoke Polish, Latin, Greek, and Italian. And actually all of his uh, 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 academic work was actually uh, uh, published in, in Latin. Uh, eventually Copernic uh, returned to Poland in 1503, and, and uh, ultimately moved into this Framburg Cathedral, and that's where he built his observatory. Now, one thing uh, when, when I talk with people and I ask them about, uh, uh, you know, what's Copernic famous for? Sometimes people will say, you know, he did, uh, invented the telescope, and he didn't. Actually, it was Galileo who invented the telescope, and that was some eight, like 80 years after after Copernic. So there was no telescope. So it was all just visual observing and uh, noting down what uh, what he saw, and this is really where um, uh, he really began his studies that resulted ultimately resulted in what we call this heliocentric planetary system. Helios is the Greek word for sun, centric meaning the center of it. Up until then, people thought that the sun, uh, all the planets revolved around the Earth, and uh, and something bothered Copernic, and and it was it was this. Uh, we call this this concept uh, retrograde motion. So if you look here uh, in the middle, uh, now here we have the sun, the, the depicted by the little yellow dot, and the Earth's orbit here and uh, going counterclockwise. And what what takes sort of you know seven different snapshots uh, as it, as it's going through its orbit. Now you also notice Mars's orbit again; it's further out, so it's uh, it takes longer to get around the Earth. So you know it's not following in the same. You know, you know uh, right along with the Earth, and so uh, if if you look at one particular point in time, you might see Mars here in Gemini, um, and then a little bit later you'll see it in Cancer, and then uh, a little further it's approaching Leo, but then a little further in time, wait a minute, it's going backwards. What's going on there? And then you know, then even further in time it continues to go backwards, but now it's starting to now it's starting to go back in the same direction again. And then the, the sixth snapshot in time, it, uh, you're at six, and uh, and then finally uh, uh, the seventh is Leo. 
And again, we call this retrograde motion. And so, again, this sort of bothered, <laughs> I was bothered but it's, it's what set Kopernik off on trying to figure out exactly what was going on. He did the math and then ultimately developed this heliocentric uh, model of, of the solar system. Um, ultimately, he wrote this pretty extensive uh, paper called On the Revolutions of Heavenly Spheres. And I won't attempt even to uh, pronounce it in Latin. Ultimately, it was published in uh, 1543. Uh, and at that point, Copernic was, was very, very sick and was unfortunately was unable to actually defend his work. And um, there's, you know, there's some stories that say that he actually had a copy of it in his hand when he, finally, when he had finally passed. Um, however, the problem was is that the, the church put this, uh, this book on their list of forbidden readings, and it remained there for almost three centuries. However, further discoveries you know, finally led to the complete acceptance of heliocentrism uh, in, the, in the 17th century. And one of the people that sort of helped make that happen was this gentleman here. Uh, it's not becoming like a pernic, but it's, it's uh, Galileo. And um, Galileo was, in fact, the person who invented the telescope and was the person to ultimately uh, discover uh, four of Jupiter's, which I think now we're, we're closing in on 80 moons that we know of, but uh, we call them the, um, uh, the Jovian moons. And uh, uh, so it's watching these, uh, these moons orbit, uh, orbit Jupiter is what ultimately helped support uh, Copernic's theory of uh, uh, the heliocentrism and, and how objects will orbit, you know, a, a larger, a larger, uh, you know, <laughs> larger object in the, uh, in, in space. And ultimately this, this change uh, brought what was, was known, sort of started what's called the, the Copernican Revolution. All right, so again, he passed away in 1543, um, but Ultimately, um, it took a long time. Uh, he really wasn't buried in a, in a place of honor. And um, it took really over two centuries uh, for people to ultimately find where Copernic was, uh, was buried. And uh, scientists actually tried unsuccessfully uh, to find his grave in like in 1802, 1909, 1939. But finally, in 2005, uh, Jerzy Gazowski, a professor at the Institute of Anthropology and, and Archaeology in, in Pultusk uh, found that found what he thought to be the burial place of the astronomer. Um, the remains were exhumed and uh, then ultimately were uh, sent to a police laboratory in Warsaw. And the laboratory work, work done both in Poland as well as in Sweden ultimately confirmed that they had found the remains of Nikolai Kopernik. And uh, he was ultimately then buried, I believe it was in, um, uh, I think it was 2009. Uh, in uh, the cathedral in Fr Fromborg, uh, Poland. So, uh, and you can go and and visit his uh, visit this grave in in that cathedral. So, um, so to, to honor Copernic, a, a couple of things you know came out of this. Um, there is on the moon the Copernicus crater, and it's a pretty extensive crater. Um, so, uh, and it's uh, something we can see typically after uh, after the first quarter. Uh, it's sort of in the second half of the moon. There's a chemical element named after Copernic called Copernicum. Uh, it's a, it has the atomic number of 112. Technically, it's sort of a, a synthetic atom. It doesn't really exist officially in nature, but it's the one thing that has the atomic number 112, so it exists, and they call it Copernicum. Uh, of course, there have been a uh, number of schools, uh, again, predominantly in Poland, but uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the world named after Copernicus. There's actually a science center in Warsaw uh, called the Copernic uh, Science Center. Actually, I was fortunate enough to to visit it uh, a couple of years ago. It's just an outstanding, uh, outstanding place. Uh, they get over a million uh, visitors a year. Uh, so, but uh, we were first. <laughs> we uh, um, and, and we'll talk about that. Um, that's what the Copernic Observatory is named after, Nicholas Copernicus. So, um, back in the early 70s. There was a group of Polish immigrants, people of Polish heritage here in the uh, in the Broom, in Broome County, that wanted to commemorate Copernic's 500th birthday. So 1973, he would have been 500 years old. And as I like to say, rather than buy a statue and plunk it in a park, say we're done. They Copernic Society 
uh, raised money and ultimately bought the land to build the observatory. Now you see there are five gentlemen on this slide here. The uh, gentleman on the left is Dr. Ed Kozlowski. He was a dentist uh, in, uh, in Binghamton and was one of the founding members of the Copernic Society. On the far right is Richard Miller, also another founding member of the Copernic Society. He was a, uh, a state rep for many years. Uh, to the uh, left of Richard Miller is uh, uh, Richard Kilsey, and he was the architect that built the original observatory, uh, our, our main classroom and, and the two domes. And unfortunately, uh, Richard just passed away just a couple of months ago. I noticed that uh, his obituary in the paper. Uh, then continuing uh, to the left, uh, the gentleman uh, in sort of the plaid coat is uh, Ed Neslick uh, of Neslick Construction, and he was the main contractor uh, for the for the event. Uh, for, for the <laughs> to build the uh, observatory, and then finally, this gentleman in the dark jacket, some of you will probably recognize as uh, Commander James Lovell of Apollo 13. This is two years after his uh, Apollo 13 mission that, uh, unfortunately, had to abort uh, landing on the moon, but they did obviously return safely, and uh, so he actually came up here to. Uh, uh, help us install the, the cornerstone, uh, which is actually physically right behind me. <laughs> when we go back to the camera, you can, you'll can you be able to see it behind me. So soon after it was built, uh, Robes, uh, Copernic was built, was donated to the, to the Robeson, uh, 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 Robeson Museum down, uh, downtown. So again, here's the, the original observatory with our two domes. Um, for those who have been here, this is our six inch dome up here, our 14 inch dome here. And this is a physics classroom right there. But as I said, it was donated to Robeson. They then, um, uh, in the 1990s, had a major capital campaign, expanded it to where it is today, uh, adding the third dome that has our, our Kresge telescope, uh, and added about five uh, times the amount of uh, floor space, uh, a lot of classrooms, and um, and this is this is what it looked like uh, up until a couple of years ago. And we'll uh, we'll talk to that in a little bit. All right, so. Um, one of the things that Copernic is, is we are more than just three telescopes on the top of a hill. We are, in fact, an a informal STEM education uh, facility. And uh, so we do a lot of things up here. Uh, we have this, we call it our Link Summer STEM Exploration Summer Camp. Uh, and uh, so here's a, a, one of our students going out on a nature hike, managed to uh, capture and, and examine a, a, a salamander. But uh, we do much more than that. Uh, we, we do a weekend in some, uh, school holiday classes. Uh, we have a program called Girl Power Science. And here are girls who are really trying to uh, promote more women in STEM. And so this, these Girl Power classes are typically aimed at uh, students that are between third and eighth grade. And we'll have a, a female subject matter expert come and talk about the, what, what they do in work. And this particular, the slide from uh, what you're seeing right here is actually we had a, uh, an astrophysicist from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center talk about carbon dioxide levels and the work that she's doing, looking at how it affects global warming and things along those lines. And then at the end of the presentation, the girls got to line up and ask their questions. And one of the girls asked a question, how did you get interested in astrophysics? Because she has her PhD in it. And her answer was great. She said, well, when I was in college, I was an English major, but my boyfriend was a physics major, and we would go from observatory to observatory. I eventually dumped the boyfriend, but I kept the astronomy. And now she's got her PhD in astrophysics and works works for NASA down at the Goddard Space Flight Center. But uh, we we believe we you know, education starts early. We offer a, a program called Copernic Kids. Uh, this is for kids that are. Uh, uh, three years old through six years old, with the, you know, sort of a, with with a parent for uh, ninety minutes or so once a month. Uh, here, this uh, this student is uh, learning about friction and different, you know, uh, how friction uh, is different depending on what what surface you're you're on. Um, we have a portable planetarium that we are able to take to uh, schools um, and uh, libraries. Uh, we've done corporate events, uh, clubs, so it's a it's something that. Uh, uh, is, has been a great resource for us. We're fortunate that the uh, 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 Floyd L. Hooker uh, Foundation uh, provided us the, the funding for that uh, planetarium. Again, getting back to our summer camp programs, uh, here we have a student looking at 
uh, at the sun safely. We've got a solar filter that takes almost all of the light out but makes it safe for us to, uh, to look at the sun. And we always, uh, whenever we can, have an opportunity to get the uh, uh, students to, uh, you know, to observe while, <laughs> while we can, uh, again, in our summer camps, are for, uh, for kids that are entering second grade through, uh, through 12th grade. Of course, we always love our Friday night programs. Uh, where we have people come up and listen to a talk on some aspect of science or technology. It's a whole range of topics. It's not just always astronomy. Um, we end up, um, I mean, sometimes, like, one of the uh, things we had, um, uh, we had a picture of, uh, we actually had a presentation on the physics of music. Why does an oboe, a trumpet, and a violin all sound different playing the same, uh, uh, the same note? So it's, it's a way to just learn more about how the world works. And uh, uh, anyway, so uh, it's, the Friday nights are, are always a lot, of, a lot of fun. And then, of course, after the program, if it's, if it's clear out, we, uh, we take you outside. And uh, I always like to say you, you, we, you're not allowed to leave until you look through a telescope. So, uh, and so we did have a couple of questions that, that came through here on, um, on Facebook. Um, uh, ask, one was asking... Uh, what year the uh, picture was with the two domes. Let me see if I can go back here to that a little bit. Um, I'm not certain of the picture. I want to say it is um, probably something in the area of the mid-70s uh, at that time. Uh, it's interesting because now I, I see where a lot more bushes are, are around our entrance, and we now have a nice uh, you know, uh, monument out front. And uh, Of course, the, you know, the gazebo was added much later. So... Um, and uh, anyway, so we're going to move on. Uh, yeah, again, so we can, we can uh, once the Friday, you know, once the presentation is over, we, we ask people to to go ahead and, and uh, take a look outside. And uh, so um, this is also our, our new 14-inch uh, uh, telescope, our uh, uh, which is a, another great great instrument to look through. Uh, we also do uh, events. So when there's uh, Things going on like uh, solar eclipses. Uh, back in 2017, there was a solar eclipse that lasted. Uh, uh, that was uh, we, that brought 1,500 people up to here. So uh, uh, the next eclipse is actually going to be on April 8th, 2024. The path of totality will be through Buffalo and Rochester. We'll be almost in the path of totality, but uh, we'll have a little sliver of of, uh, of sun left over. Um, one of the other things that we've done here over the past six years is design, build the Copernic Science Park. It was a uh, project that we uh, collaborated with the Junior League of Binghamton, uh, the service uh, organization of women, and they just were fantastic to work with and ultimately created a, uh, a STEM-themed playground. Um, and, you know, we got donations from uh, New York State, the Gannett Foundation, Decker Foundation, Hoyt, me, and Kresge Foundations, as well as uh, individual people. Uh, we also got... Um, uh, uh, engineering students from Binghamton University built us this uh, this nice little orange bridge in here. Uh, we've had two scouts actually get their uh, highest award in scouting with, through service projects here. Caitlin Sonnen, one of our interns, uh, did all the signage for these uh, uh, for all the structures on the park, including a QR code that takes you to our website, and you can learn more about the individual structure. And Anthony Dudiniak, who did his Eagle Scout award uh, with the phases of the moon uh, signage for us. And then finally, again, Jeremy Carty does these great uh, live streams, but he's a great photographer as well. In fact, uh, he did a nice uh, job on this uh, picture of the, uh, the science park, and you can even see a bit of the Milky Way uh, uh, up here in the sky. So, All right, one of the things we did was uh, we invited people to come and do a um, uh, some kind of a celebration for Copernic's uh, birthday, and... For those people that entered, we would say we would uh, pull two uh, names for those people who actually submitted memberships. I'm going to show you some of the uh, uh, the artwork that came back. So uh, this one was from, uh, actually, hold on a second here. I had my notes written down. Yeah, we had a total of four entries. This was from the Marie family. Uh, it uh, Saturn and uh, somebody in a rocket ship and maybe an, even an alien ship there. Uh, the next one is the Schaefer family. They've already got their uh, birthday cake ready to go. And 
in reading up, reading up on the Copernican uh, Revolution. Um, this was from the Peterson family, and uh, I love how it sort of shows that uh, 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 you know all that you can see, all that you, that comes in through that telescope. And then uh, there was actually a video submitted. Unfortunately, I couldn't grab it, but it had this sort of ethereal kind of uh, look to it. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to switch back to my uh, my Zoom window here, and uh, I'm going to pull the cards. So I've got my bowl is going to be my uh, little space helmet, and I've got four cards with the uh, the names in it. I don't see what I'm what I'm pulling out. So the first card will be the Marie family. So congratulations to the Marie family. And the second card is going to be this one, uh, this one right here. And it's from the Short family. So actually, the, the image you see right here is the, the Short family. Uh, have won a, a, a membership. And then, uh, actually, you're looking at me. So I can go back to uh, uh, the PowerPoint. And uh, so there's the, that's actually on our Facebook page. So if you want to go in and check that out, you can see that going. And then also um, uh, the Marie family. So uh, those two, one, we thank all people who entered. And for those of you who uh, don't have a... Uh, or don't know about a membership, uh, Copernic membership is actually pretty valuable because we belong to the ASTC, the Association of Science and Technology Centers. And uh, with a Copernic membership, you, you can get into over 350 other um, other science centers. So uh, uh, membership uh, information is right on our website. So uh, we are going to take uh, a brief break uh, so I can get uh, our next speaker connected and via Zoom. And uh, But before that, we have to sing happy birthday. So uh, with some little uh, editing, we made it 549. <laughs> so um, OK, so we're going to sing happy birthday, and we'll call him by his first name, Mikolai. So ready? Here, here we go. Sing with, with whatever voice uh, God gave you there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mikolai. Happy birthday to you. All right, we uh, won't be blowing out any, <laughs> any cakes here for for some time, I think. But anyway.